sometimes in mathematics numbers can be very large and very exact. Is it necessary that we have a number that is 20 decimal places long or 30 decimal places long? If we want to use the number pi in a calculation, is it sufficient that we use 3.14 or 3.14159? Does it need to be longer? It depends on what we're working on. But rounding is a very important part of mathematics. Sometimes numbers just simpler are easier to work with. We call the process of shortening those rounding. There's another method called truncation that we'll also take a look at. When I tell people we're going to talk about rounding, they usually look at me a little bit funny. You do rounding in elementary and middle school. But believe it or not, rounding is something that a lot of kids in high school and even in college struggle with. And so it's important that we start there so that you have a good understanding of how to work with the numbers. Rounding is very simple. All you have to do is follow a couple of rules. In the first example, we have a number. 327.551582. We decided we wanted to shorten it a little bit. And we want to round it. And we want this here to be our last digit. We want to end the number right there. Well, do we round it up? Do we round it down? What are we going to do? Here's what we'll do. We'll look at the number after the final digit. This will be the final digit, and we'll look at the one after it. Notice it's larger than 5, 5 or more. If it's 5 or more, we increase the last digit by 1. And notice when I did that, 0.5515 became 0.5516. 5 or more, you add 1 to that final digit. On the second example, we have just the opposite. Notice we want the 6 to be our ending right there. That's where our last digit is. Well, notice the digit after that is a 1. It's 4 or less. It's smaller than 5. If it's 4 or less, we just leave it be. We don't change it. And so rounded, we have negative 153.216. Some people remember these rules with 5 or more, let it soar. 4 or less, let it rest. The next example is number 4 in the Adventure Guide. Notice we have negative 1,325.113. And we want to round it so that our number ends right here, the 2. Well, the digit after is a 5, which means this will increase to a 3. But negative 133 is not even close to negative 1,325 we have to have a placeholder. And so we say negative 1,325 will round to negative 1,330. We keep the zero there to show that this was in the thousands. There's a few examples we haven't touched on yet. Example 3, example 5, example 6. If you'd pause the video here, give those a try. Let's see how you do. Okay, let's take a look. The answer number 3 is 37.13. The answer number 5 is 197. The answer number 6 is 76,000. Now remember, if you ever want to see the worked out solutions to any problem we go over in the notes, go on to the website, onto the Notes and Home Fund Packets link, and you can open up a copy of the completed notes. It has all of the solutions written out, and all of the work is shown for it. When we're dealing with rounding, it's important to know place value. Each place has a name. We have our ones, our tens, our hundreds, our thousands, ten thousands, and it keeps on going. On the other side of the decimal point, we have our tenths, hundredths, thousandths, etc. And notice everything after the decimal ends in a THS. It's important to be familiar with these places and being able to identify them because more often than not, they won't underline what they want you to round to. They'll say round to the nearest tenth, round to the nearest whole number, which is the same as the nearest one, round to the nearest thousandth, and so you'll need to know that terminology. It's worth taking a few minutes to review those place values, and they're laid out nicely in your Explorer's Guide, to be familiar with what those places are called. Please pause here, take a few moments to review the names of those places, and try the examples that follow. Example 7 
all the way up through example 18 are great problems to try. Okay, let's take a look at the answers to those. Number 7 is 60. Number 8 is negative 12.8. Number 9 is 3.84. Number 10, 12.626. Number 13, oh dear, number 11, negative 107. Number 12, negative 200. Number 13, 78.55. Number 14, negative 457.1260. Number 15, 32.8. Number 16, 15.765. Number 17 and 18, they gave you a fraction. You'll need to put those fract that, was that division into your calculator. So 13 over 64 is 13 divided by 64. And then round that decimal. I come up with 0 0.203. Number 18, 0 0.74. Now there's one more way that sometimes we shorten a number. And it's like you take a saw and cut it right off. That process is called truncation. Truncation simply means to chop off. So if I have 37.229 and I want to truncate that so I have a whole number, I just cut off the decimal, 37. 142.8872. If I want to truncate that, I just chop off the decimal, 142. There's one more example in the packet for you to try. Give that a try right now. The answer, number 21, 1,873. We simply chop the decimal off. So there you see you have two different methods, truncation and rounding. More often than not, we round. But occasionally you'll see things are truncated, and that's very common in mathematics, and it's worth knowing what it's all about.